Hi there, and welcome back to an Understanding Medications. We've just explained the four types of cellular receptors that our medications can bind to, and in this lesson, we're going to understand a lot more about those receptors and uh, investigating things like receptor binding, affinity, selectivity, and potency. We're going to start out this lesson by understanding the medications, how they bind to the receptors. We very simplistically think that it's a molecular shape, and if this molecular shape uh, meets this molecular shape, then that's fine, it's bound. But it really does have a lot to do with the molecular forces as well. So recall how the phospholipid bilayer is held together by van der Waals forces, the, uh, the tails are held together by van der Waals forces, the heads are held together by hydrogen bonds. Well, the binding of the ligand to the receptor are going to use those forces as well, and they're going to use other things like uh, ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is, is a fairly strong, it's a lot stronger than those other two forces I've just discussed. I like to use the analogy of our modern electronic devices, which have some snap-in features. You know, when the accessory comes into close proximity to the receptor, the magnetic forces guide the accessory into place and they snap together. Now, in applying that analogy to our medications, the molecular properties of the drug have various attractant forces to the molecular properties of the receptor. The drug is therefore attracted to the receptor, and just like the binding of the accessory to the electronic device, most of our binding of drugs to the receptors is not permanent. There can be a lot of differences, though, in the strength of the binding, and that is termed affinity, the drug's affinity to the receptor. So sometimes a medication is said to have a high affinity or a low affinity to a receptor. And using that electronic device analogy, Let's say that, for instance, there are usually five magnets that are holding it in place, and we've lost three of those magnets. Well, it's still going to have the same shape, isn't it? And it's still going to have a little bit of a binding, but it can snap off a lot easier. So in applying that to our medications, if the medication has a low affinity for a particular receptor, the molecular binding holding it into place is not as strong, and the receptor and drug just kind of pop off. And then conversely, if it's got a higher affinity, it's going to result in being bound to that receptor a lot longer, having a, a lot more difficulty being pulled apart. And later we'll see how affinity is going to contribute to potency. And potency it is, is described as the measure of the drug's activity in terms of the amount of the drug that is needed to produce a certain effect. So if two drugs do exactly the same thing and one only needs three milligrams, the other one needs 30 milligrams, obviously the one that has the three milligram dose is going to be having the stronger potency and it may have a lot to do with the binding of the medication to its receptor. Another concept that we should overview right now has to do with selectivity. Selectivity has to do with how selective a medication is for a certain receptor. Now, I'll use the common example for this of the adrenergic drugs. In other words, the medications that mimic adrenaline, or sometimes called epinephrine. Recall that we use adrenaline in the fight or flight response when we're running away from something that's about to do us harm. The receptors for adrenaline are all the way through the body, but I'm just going to use two receptors in this simple example. We have adrenergic alpha-1 receptors on the peripheral blood vessels, the blood vessels to the skin, the blood vessels to the extremities, and the binding of adrenaline to those receptors will constrict those blood vessels. And in turn, that may very well increase the blood pressure. We also have the beta-2 receptors on the bronchi, and they will be acted on by adrenaline itself as well. So if adrenaline would hit those 
beta-2 receptors dilating the bronchi and allowing more air to go into the lungs so that the person would have plenty of air when they're running away. In a fight or flight response, the adrenaline will find both the alpha-1 and the beta-2 receptor. We can simplistically represent that with this diagram. The adrenaline fits both the alpha-1 receptor and the beta-2 receptor, and it has a strong molecular bond to both of those receptors. But suppose we just wanted to get the therapeutic effects of adrenaline for a person with asthma, and all we wanted to do was open up the bronchi. If we developed a selective beta-2 adrenergic medication, we could do that without constricting the blood vessels, so we could do that without the major side effects. That can be simplistically represented by these diagrams where the beta-2 medication has a strong binding to the beta-2 receptor, but the very weak binding in other parts of the adrenergic receptor. We also have drugs that will bind to another receptor, a receptor that doesn't seem to be related to the original receptor at all. So for instance, the early antihistamines bound to and blocked the histamine 1 receptor. That was what they were supposed to do. But they bound to another receptor, the acetylcholine receptor, blocked that receptor, and a lot of the side effects of that medication were going to be found because of that binding to the acetylcholine receptor. So you'll find that our medications will be trying to get more and more selective as time goes on. In summary of this lesson, affinity has to do with how well the drug binds to the receptor. Selectivity has to do with the degree to which the drug acts on a given receptor relative to how well it binds to other receptors, and potency has to do with a measure of the drug activity expressed in terms of the amount that is required to produce an effect. Let's try to gain an understanding of the terms affinity, selectivity, and potency by applying our knowledge to the opioid medications. Recall that we are saying that opioid analgesics work by binding to the opioid receptors, mainly in the spinal cord at this level here. At that point, there's what we can simplistically think of as a gate. The pain is being transmitted from the extremities, and we have a gate there that can decrease the number of impulses allowed to go to the brain. So the opioid binding right here will decrease the perception of pain at the level of the brain. There are a number of subsets of opioid receptors in the body, but the main one that is involved in analgesic effects right here is the mu receptor. One of our opioids, morphine, binds to these mu receptors, and that decreases the messages to the brain and the perception of pain decreases. Another one of our opioid analgesics called fentanyl also binds to the mu receptors right here, but fentanyl is 100 times more potent than morphine. In other words, the dose of fentanyl that would be needed to get the same pain relief as morphine is just one one-hundredth the amount. And using what we just learned in the last lesson, develop a hypothesis about why fentanyl would be so much more potent than morphine. And while there could be a number of reasons why a medication is more potent than a similar one that acts by the same mechanism, one of the main reasons that fentanyl is so much more potent than morphine is that the affinity to the mu receptor is much stronger. In other words, when fentanyl binds to that same receptor, it is much more difficult to get it off that receptor.
And this strong affinity to the receptor ends up with the drug, simplistically speaking, sending many more messages to the cell to decrease the transmission of pain impulses. The affinity to the receptor can affect the potency of the medication. Let's take another quick question to apply our knowledge of selectivity. The mu receptor has two major subsets, meaning that the receptors differ just a little bit from each other. The mu1 receptor is responsible for the analgesic or pain relieving effect and the mu2 receptor is responsible for respiratory depression, constipation, and the euphoric effect that makes the medication addictive. So which one of the following do you think would be correct? A. Drug discovery scientists would be looking to develop opioids that are selective for the mu1 receptor. B. Drug discovery scientists would develop a very potent opioid if the drug they discovered had a strong affinity to the mu1 receptor. Or C. Both of the above are correct. And you were correct if you had said C. Both of the above are correct. We're always looking for new medications that have fewer side effects and one of the ways that can happen is if we develop more selective medications. Some of the most valuable medications bind only to one receptor that gives the most therapeutic effect without binding to other receptors which yield the side effects.